So those are the same. That makes no sense what we're talking about. So, Nick, let's put one head. That is fine. One head for Nick. And then starts the rib cage. Here's where the similarities really show up. Our rib cage, which if I put the drawing up a little better, is actually one head deep, one, excuse me, and a half heads tall. Everybody with that? How wide is this? It is one and a third heads wide at the widest point. Let's look at the dogs. Ripcage. And I know the neck is a, well, I've already measured it. The neck is one, then starts the scapula, then it comes forward. I mean, I'm going to put this rib cage in here. I'm going to take these same dimensions, but I'm going to change them somewhat. In other words, I said this was one head. That's actually how wide he is. How deep he is, is one, and this is averages, one third. <laughs> yes, it is. Huh? But it's still one supposed to be oops, one and a half in length. This is getting awful complicated. Y'all see what I'm talking about? When you begin to think about it, the mass that your space that you're occupying is about the same. They're skinnier this way, bigger this way than we are, but they're the same distance up and down as far as they're occupying about the same mass or encompassing the same stuff. Rib, okay, rib cage. Takes care of your lungs, takes care of protect your heart, all that. That's the same thing as animals, okay? They're really going in the And some of them are not actually a head wide, meaning if I'm looking down over the top of that dog, uh, maybe they're not quite a head wide. Well, neither are you. Neither are you. In other words, when I say that you're one head deep, a lot of females are not one head deep. And then there's Carson, he ain't even close. <laughs> what? Y'all follow what I'm talking about? And then there's guys that live in the mountains. Good Lord, been no air. And, th and they're deeper than one head. Very seldom does that, do you see that? But big husky guys, yes, their rib cage actually might be deeper than, than one head. But anyway, the point is, we, we both occupy about the same same space, except one skinny and the other's fat in different directions. Then you've got a half a head in between, so do they. So we've got hip block starts right here. Ours is approximately one head tall. How, how, how long is there? One. So that's the same. How wide is ours? One and a half. It's actually more narrow than that. I consider the hip block with with the points of the great truck canter out here. That's a head and a half wide. But that's not the hip block. That's that's the leg bone sticking out there. But if, if you follow what I'm talking about. So we're usually head tall, head and a half wide, how deep? Three.
three fourths of an inch deep, unless you're folding by me. Anyway, does everybody follow the, the mask? This guy is very, very similar, except he's barely one head wide. Once, when I say wide, meaning looking down over the top of that dog, I can say he's about one head or less. And that's these bones that come out of a hip socket. He's also one head long. That's the similarity of what we're doing over here. Let me raise that up. One head. So the, the biggest similarity is if you take from the head and or okay torso, let's just take the torso. How many heads are, are we talking about? Uh, three, basically. Three heads tall. Everybody follow what I'm talking about? The, what we consider the torso? Three, three, and, a, and I've seen people three and a quarter. I've seen people not quite three, if you're short-waisted. This dog is actually one and a half, two and a half, three. He's pretty close to three and a quarter, three, anywhere from three to three and a half, almost identical to what we are. And that's, okay, a dox, dachshund. We'll be a short-legged dog. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Wiener dog. You know what a wiener dog is. I, a wiener dog is a uh, rib cage. He's about three heads long, three and a half, three to three and a half. Torso, but his legs are only this tall. Well, a greyhound is basically the same length. But he's got long legs. So are we still similar? Uh, they're short-legged people. As far as that goes, they're little slender. Oh. Are you getting... Yeah, it's causing trouble. I know. All right. Does everybody begin to get the similarities? How about, let's get to the extremities. We got arms, we got legs, they got front arms, they got back legs, they got, if they stood up, let's take the measurement. I like to use measurements, that's, and I know this is confusing to some of you, but when you, when you measure the bone itself, uh, example on the scapula, it's gonna be a little shorter than, than one head. I like to use where the form change takes place, meaning the top of this and then where the where the form changes on the front of that, that's gonna be one head almost every time. If you're dealing with horses, it's gonna be a little longer, possibly, but I'm not the bone, but, but the form change, where the muscle wraps over the bone and we go to the front of this, front of this. And then if I go this other measurement, which is the upper arm, this is your scapula, this is the upper arm back to the elbow, that's the short one on animals compared to this one. Meaning, let's make it about a little bit shorter than the top one. So I've got this, this, and then this down to the knee, one head, wait a minute, let me get two down. One, two, and then that's basically. The most important thing, that will do. The most important thing is the fact it goes forward and back and forward with your movement, <coughs> I, and you, you guys say, well, how simple is that? The most times I have seen problems in, with, with 
beginners or people that have not studied anatomy is you will put the shoulder unit in there and it, and it will be straight up and down or there is no there is no movement forward and back and forward. Guys, if there's anything different than forward, back, and forward, it's roadkill. It's a truck has changed it. I can know where it ain't, it's broken. You with me? You can't, it's like your leg. This is my favorite part. Well, let's put the back one in there. <coughs> I just said forward, back, forward. Let's start at the hip. Let's go forward, one head, back, one and a quarter, forward again, one to the toes, and there's, he's standing there. Okay, we're the same way. You're frowning. You know, did you, does this make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, so we're good. All right. When, when I'm standing here, right, from my hip, which is this point right here, the socket, I can bend my leg forward and back and forward. Huh? Does everybody see that? Serious. This is this. If I bend it any direction besides that, you say, "Well, I can push my leg back here." Yes, you can. But from this point, it's still going forward, back, and forward. Everybody follow me? Come on, Gene. Are you following me, or are you thinking you are? Same thing is true with the the front shoulder. He can put. I'm say this is a king. Well, say it's a dog. I don't care what you say. Say he's putting his hand clear out of here somewhere. He's reaching for a ball. He's reaching for a bone. He's reaching for a bone. Okay, as long as I go forward, back, and forward, then I can move. I can move that leg forward, but if you make it back, in other words, if I leave this here and pull this up forward, I just broke it. You have to get this in your head. And the reason I'm harping on this is because 50% of the people in the past that have worked on animals screw this up. Yes. Why I'm talking a lot about it. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Katie, Jessica, this is, yeah. Jesse, Jesse will do. For, put that in your brain and remember forward, back, forward. And that's, and that's front leg, back leg, us. Yeah, I don't care what you're talking about. We have to get that movement happening with the bones structure. Torso, his torso is about the same as this guy. And you say, well, what else is similar here? The eyeball is about in the center of his head. Guess where it is in our head? The center. <laughs> his nose is longer, but it still makes these eyeballs in the center. What's different about dogs compared to a bear? Not a whole lot. Bear, cut the head off of a bear. Well, you don't have to. But if you if you cut the head off of a bear, took the hide off, skinned him out, and stood him up there like this. Which is going to look better, me or the bear? The bear. The same. You know. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is he's going to look pretty much like me. 
it's really scary. Have you ever seen bears kidnap? I mean, I haven't seen one in person, but I saw that on the, on the television, on John, on Channel 13, whatever the, that is. It's amazing. It's amazing. So is an elephant. Now, an elephant look more like me or the bear? Bear. bear. It's a bear. I don't know about that. Oh, if we want to say you don't want to I'm saying you've got to you gotta take the head off because uh, not everybody's head is as good looking as some. But <laughs> what are you laughing at? What I'm trying to tell you is an elephant is way close to human in that proportion. Everything but the head size. Yeah, he's got the big head. I know it. I know it. <laughs> Elephant. <laughs> I'm on my stomach. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk a little more specific because I think y'all are getting the idea. When you're doing these animals, you're going to have to measure with head sizes, guys. That's simple. I want you to draw a side profile. This is really confusing. Side profile view. Okay. And why we're doing that is because we're getting the measurements from that. In other words, you're, you're taking one head and from the front of the torso, one head, two head, three heads, and I've got him a little long somehow. Most of them are going to be closer to three, which is what we are, closer to three. Everybody get that. Uh, quarter horses compared to thoroughbreds. The horse is pretty similar, except the head, the quarter horse's head is smaller, so he's a little, he measures longer, but that's because his head's smaller. As far as body shape and so on, yeah, the, the I get this wrong. Thoroughbreds look longer, leaner, the quarter horses stockier, and so on. But the bone structure is basically measures the same. He's just he's just a leaner, longer geared machine that that thoroughbred. Is everybody? Doing? And what's the Morgan horse? In other words, there's 1,500 kinds of different horses. Well, there's probably 1,500 kinds of different people. Everybody, there there are some basic <coughs> things. Take Carson. Please. I forget just one time. Not existing. Okay. Other questions. Let's go to the details since I have no room here. Let's look. <coughs> I'm going to show you the small one if y'all can see that. Basically, this could be the top of my head. It's almost perfect. But I heard what you said. No, you did. Yes, I did. Yes, sir. Center line. Guys, when I locate the eyeballs in there, I know they're halfway from the side profile. But where are they from the top view? And I'll, I'll, I'll make believe we can almost see them down. Well, I'll put them back in there where they really are. They're in a receding plane. The forehead sticks out further than the eyeballs. Everybody agrees with that. Their focal point is right back here in the back in the center. And if I put these lines in, like so, and I then put the eyeball in there, let's get them a little closer together. Crap eyes. <laughs> yeah. Then, there's the nose sticking out there. I 
looking down on top of a cow or, well, let's say a horse head. It's longer. And let's say the top third is basically their eyes are not halfway. Their eyes are about a third of the way down. And their focal point, make this long story short, is not at the base of their skull, but at about a half of that distance. You ever notice the bullet hole in a cow's head and so on? It's usually right there. Not in between the eyes, because there's no brain there. That's just bone. The brain is up here if you want. Never mind. Never mind. I'm talking about killing stuff. You got you got to aim for the right place if you're looking for the brain. Anyway, do you see the difference of these little, these little, what, let's call them, let's call them umbrella shapes? That's a, the axis of the eyeball. Because these guys, horses, cows, grass eaters, whatever you want to call them, can actually see everything clear out. Their peripheral vision is way bigger than ours. They can see everything but except right behind their fanny. Like the guy over here, Reed Garrish. Yes, sir. Really? And that's because like they're the 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 car, they can see the they're the security. security. Somebody's going to come up and eat them. And grab the zebras and all of them. Does everybody understand? Each animal will be slightly different. The dog is, is actually a little closer to what we are. Yeah, it is, because they're meat eaters, and they're looking forward, they ain't looking behind them, they ain't even worried about somebody sticking up and biting them on the thing. When you're modeling this in clay, it is very important for you to put a center line in, in the whole thing. In other words, not only in your rib cage, in your hip flux, you've got to know where that center line is, you've got to know where the center line is, Focal point on the eyeball. The eyeball has uh, how many? How many axes? Three. At least three. It's got this corner. This corner is it higher? Is it lower? If it's higher on the outside, like mine, it's probably a sign of intelligence. <laughs> or lower, like Sylvester's. Down and on, it's probably a oh, sign of money because he's made a fortune. <laughs> he's a anyway, he's Italian, different, different ethnic, ethnic, different. Yes, yes. those peoples. <laughs> okay, different races are slightly different. Not only do you have this axis, but you have a tilt. Is my eyeball sitting like this? It's actually the bottom lid is in further than the top lid. They're covering, okay, over the ball. Everybody with that. What other axis am I dealing with? The lid itself, there is a high point on the upper lid. There is a lowest point on the lower lid. That creates an axis like this probably. Everybody follow what I'm talking about? Let's put one on here. Let's say when you pull up the highest point of that upper lid, tear duct, lowest point. Yeah, I've got it level this way. But what about the axis? This way. That's what I mean by the highest point of the upper lid, lowest point of this lid. And everybody's a slightly different guy. That, that makes a world of difference whether these things actually look like you next semester when you do your own sales, but or whether you do an animal and you pay attention to the photographs and you make it look like that animal's eye rather than somebody else's. When 
I said the pitch of the eye, the one thing that most of you will miss, that's what I'm talking about this morning. The tilt of the eye on a dog, on a cat, and a cat really confuses me because they don't really look like it. But the bottom lid sets in the head further than the top lid. Especially in the ostrich. Especially. serious about that. Is there certain animals that we cannot do? Yeah. Like a giraffe. What animals can we not do? Yeah. You can do a giraffe. Yeah. I want to know what animals we can't do. Or like that we shouldn't do. Things you, I wouldn't call them things. They're reptiles. They're other things. So I'm, I'm asking you question. to do an animal that is, that is closely proportioned to a human. That does not include an alligator. However, you put a big snout on Carson and I tell you, it's just not. I mean, you're still. You 
guys just don't know that, but it's harder to see what I'm talking about. It's easier to see on a cow, on a horse, on a zebra, on a deer, on a goat, on a dog, on a cat, on a lion, on a bear, on a cat. No. <laughs> I've had people do kangaroos just because they want a kangaroo. You know, their anatomy is basically the same, except they got, they're kind of like a wiener dog. The opposite of a wiener dog. No, they're, they are a wiener dog on one end and a greyhound on the other. Their arms are about this long, and their back legs are twice as long. No. So there's skeletons of them. Yeah. Can you research one? Do you know what they're, do you know what they look like? No. No, you don't. You need access to the animal you're going to do. That's research. You got if it's your dog, you take pictures of your dog. You can measure him from his little chunk. <laughs>
fasting for a peace mode is probably way more important than the animals and the details and everything else that you're going to be concerned with. If the design is poor to start with, it's kind of like composition, you know what I mean? It will be poor when you're through. It will also not work. You will have undercuts. It's Garrett, of course, said, I want to do the giraffe standing up. Well, is that possible? I could probably do it. Can Garrett? No. <laughs> Not a chance. And the reason I say that is that air, that daylight underneath that giraffe has to be filled up with something. It, there's no way these little bitty scrawny legs in clay, number one, are going to support the thing. And during the firing, it's going to break. It's going to, besides, how are you going to cast it with a piece mold, uh, without undercuts? Yeah, you're not, unless you design it with <coughs> that in mind. A good design, the, the kind of design that we actually uh, like, or for the lack of words, that's effective is a pyramid type bigger at the bottom, smaller at the top, it supports itself. Not only with clay, but, well, architectonically, I'm that category, which means it, it need, it's clay, it needs to look like it's strong enough to hold it up. Now, bronze is a different animal. It, Steel is a totally different animal. You want something running on one leg? You can do it. In clay, you cannot do it. Unless there's other things in the composition that holds this animal up and support it and so on and so forth. Plus, it has to be big enough at the bottom that you can get your hand in there and press the clay in the boat. You're doing a bear, and he's sitting down. His ass has got to be big enough you can get your hand up in there. <laughs> and press the clay into his head. Are you with me? This is, this is not. Think about it. Now, the shells... Whoa, 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 Hers can be a smaller ass than yours, Carson, because her hand is smaller. It will go up in the little small places. So look at your hand, and if it won't go up in there to press the clay in your animal, then it's a poor design. It is not going to work. Not only is it a poor design, it's the wrong size. We need to make the animal big enough that you can get your hand up in there. And or even a stick. Y'all follow what I mean? If the, the design is such that we can put the clay in there and trick it. And ram it up in there and trick that stick in Yes. Y'all follow what I mean? There's, there, there's tricks you can use to make this work, but, but you can only go so far. It has to be a good design to start with. It's a pyramid shape. And for the most part, that animal either needs to be laying down because obviously then it's bigger laying down than it is standing on its feet. It'll support itself. You know, it's common sense almost. Are you thinking? You say, well, I don't know how I wanted it. I wanted a horse running. Well, then graduate out of this class do another one or two, and eventually you can do a bronze, and you can do that. Not with clay. This is ceramic clay, guys. It's kind of like your plaster piece. Carson's going to love this. <laughs> Poor design, or taking your design too far to the ground and try, trying to show it, and the next thing you know, it's in about five pieces. Well, or with clay, we take it to the plaster room and try to cast it, number one, it won't come out. It, you, 
you got trouble, and if you even get it out, send it to the firing stage, it probably collapsed in the kill. So I mean, there's it's just double, triple trouble. Good design. Think about that. I have a few examples of stuff that's heavy at the bottom, wider at the bottom, bigger at the bottom, smaller, pyramid type design. And I'm not saying it has to be a simple box pyramid, no. I'm saying that's the structure though, that's that's the overall shape. Yes, ma'am. Sounds matters. <laughs> and when I say that, I I like a good size is about seven inches at the shoulders. If whatever animal you're doing besides a giraffe. <laughs> and you can do a giraffe, but we got a long neck and it's probably going to be laying down. And that long neck's probably going to be up against the body somehow. Don't follow what I mean. It's all about design. However, if a if a dog, a cat, a lion, bear, or whatever it is you're doing, a horse is at least seven inches at the shoulder. If he were standing up, that's seven inches so-called on your uh, side profile view of the bones, because that's what you guys are going to do between now and Wednesday, is your drawings. Just like you did in figure drawing of the human I need you to do a side profile view of your dog, whatever you're doing. In the position that we're going to be No, okay. not in the position. Everybody hear that? Okay. The bone drawing will be a simple side profile standing view because that's what we measure off of. It is really simple to make the head size mark on your wooden tool make that mark and then all you got to do is reach over to the, you, you measure it on your drawing you reach over here and it's got to be that big you already know how big and how long the stuff has to be you with me <coughs> excuse me uh, if you can <coughs> there we go of course if you can find a top view, and by the way, I have a book in my office that stays in my office. However, if you want to borrow it, go make copies out of it, or look online and see if you, it's out of print, or I'd have it in the bookstore. Okay? It has a certain number of, it has dogs, lions, goats, it has a certain number of animals in there. Uh, not only back view, top view, front view, side view. It's, it's got lots of views and the relationships of those. It's a good book. Uh, you can, how much time we got? You can figure the head sizes on a photograph, guys. It's, it's tricky. It's distorted if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing. You can take the information from the side profile, which is, if it's taken from a distance, is, is not foreshortened. And you can measure the head, measure how long that body is. You can measure how tall that body is from the bottom of the foot to the top of the shoulder compared to front to back, everybody with me. And once you know that information, you can take a front profile photograph and project how wide he is compared to how tall he was. Number one, if I know, let's just say he's two and a half inch tall, at the shoulders, and I see the front profile view. I don't have any room here. Let's say I've got the front front profile of a lion. 
Follow what I'm talking about? How do you get information from one photograph to the other? Is it basically if I know this side profile and I measure with no foreshortening the fact that he's actually probably two and a quarter heads tall? Because I can't, I get them all mixed up. I have to go back and measure myself. I don't ever trust myself, guys, and you shouldn't trust yourself on this either until you actually do the research, but you come over to this view, you can't use this head because it's foreshortened. See what I mean? It's coming at you like this. But you can use the fact that I know he's two and a quarter heads tall from this view, so all you got to do is say, well, okay, then there's one, two, let me get this right, one, Two and a quarter, because I'm projecting where his shoulders would be. And as soon as I know I've got that right, all I gotta do is turn it like this, and then I say, son of a that's good. <laughs> Y'all see what I just did? No. I don't mean the dance, I mean the information. But do you see how to project information in there? It isn't foreshortened, guys. It cannot, it, you cannot use the measurements from foreshortened photographs. You have to use what's real with your measurements and project it into whatever. You with me? And I say, that's assuming that this line is one head wide, and they're not. Check out uh, OETA's series on animal. There's a lion series. There's hyena series. There's I don't even know what all. But I that, I wouldn't stop at a book. Are you kidding me? If I'm actually trying to get capture somewhat of the essence of an animal, because that's what we're doing. We're not making eyes, eyelashes, and detail and ceramic. Collect. No, we're not. We're, we're, we're catching the essence of that animal. Try to. You need to know something about the subject. I, I have no, well, maybe I, I, I start to say, I have no fear that you guys can make an animal in clay and do this if you know what it looks like. If you're standing there, Scratching your head and you say, well, I don't know what to do. That I, I'm going to say that's because you don't know what the animal looks like. Are you kidding me? Think about what I just said. Now, some of you think you know what. <laughs> okay, Carson. 